Hello, hello, and welcome to Lunch Break Live. Uh, today, we are going to talk about no self-control. I know a lot of you guys struggle with self-control. I know I struggle with self-control as well, and we're gonna dive into that, and I'm gonna share with you a key to actually tapping into self-control and um, increasing that in your life. But first, um, I want to know if you are in a snow day. We have a snow day or an ice day. We have This is our second one. And I would love to know where you are and what you're doing during your snow day. If you're lucky enough to have one, go ahead and put that in the comments. And let me introduce myself. My name is Kim Clinkenbeard. I have helped thousands of people over the last 30 years take back their health and reach their goals through my fitness, nutrition, faith, and mindset programs. And today I help women do the same through my mind and body transformation program for women 40 to 65. So if you have issues with self-control at times, I would like you to raise your hand in the comments and i think we can all relate to this I, there are many reasons why we would lose self-control and i think as we get older we expect that maybe having control over ourselves and our actions gets easier and i'm not sure that that's always the case sometimes in different areas of our life at different phases of our life or seasons self-control can creep up on us and it can become something that we lose and i wanted to give you guys a key to gaining more self-control and a reason why you might not have as much self-control in certain areas of your life as you would like to so let's talk about it really quickly so self-control first of all is the fruit of the spirit so so as Christians, we have the Holy Spirit in us and self-control is one of the fruits of the Holy Spirit. So we already have it within us. It's just that sometimes we're not exercising it. And just like our muscles, if we don't flex our muscles and exercise those, they get weaker. And so sometimes the fruit of the Spirit that we're lacking is because we're not exercising um, that spirit that fruit in our lives and we're not exercising some of the things that will make that fruit prevalent in our lives so uh the fruits of the spirit are joy self-control love kindness faithfulness gentleness peace so we want to exercise things that god gives us so that we can uh, create and be more fruitful and have our lives express those fruits more abundantly. But it's not just trying to be more self-controlled. God does not call us to try to be more self-controlled all the time. He doesn't try, he doesn't call us to try and have more joy. It seems like the harder we try, sometimes the less we have of that. But it's in direct relationship with something that I think some of us forget, and that is resting in Him. Through Christ, we are able to have the fruits of the Spirit abundantly show up in our lives. So it's resting and then something, a few other things too that we can, as Christians, exercise in our lives that will produce the fruit that we are really wanting to see, self-control being one of those. I'm gonna give you an example here in just a minute. But sometimes we are not, we are always called to act. God doesn't call us to, he calls us to rest in him, but not just sit on our haunches and do nothing. God commands us to take action. We are supposed to believe that is an exercise and action we are supposed to be doers of the word not just hearers so it there's also actions that we can take but it's not just trying harder within our own power so let's talk about one thing that you can do a key component to a more abundant self-control and that is healthy boundaries God calls us to set up healthy boundaries in our lives, and when we don't have boundaries, 
we are unable to be controlled in every situation. And therefore, some of the other fruits of the Spirit are not as abundant either, like peace. Our peace can be disrupted. Our joy can definitely be disrupted. So, and our kindness and all of, all of the fruit of the Spirit can get disrupted without clear, distinct boundaries. And here's what, where I came up with that. It's not from me, it's from scripture. Um, it's 1 Corinthians 10, 13, and it says here that no temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. God is faithful, and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with the temptation, he will also provide the way of escape that you may be able to endure it. Here's the thing about escape. If you're going to escape, you have to do something. You have to get up and move. And that is where setting boundaries helps you specifically with self-control. And I do believe that God is calling us as part of his escape plan for us to have boundaries set in place before the temptation arises. So then we can exercise our self-control, flex that muscle, grow that abundantly, that fruit abundantly in our lives. And here's some examples of that. So this is just a clear cut health example for weight loss, right? So that is what I teach. So I'm going to go there first, but we can apply this to other areas as well. If we are trying to eat better and not eat, let's say, more sugar. I know that's a biggie for everybody. And with the holidays passing and Valentine's coming up, sugar's on the brain, right? So if we are really trying to not eat sugar and we're trying to eat healthier, make better choices, some healthy boundaries could be abstaining from those things. Don't buy them. Don't have them in your home, at your desk, at work, in your car. And having some of these boundaries in place, well, when the temptation arises, then you are more likely to be able to exercise self-control and rely on that fruit of the Spirit to carry you through. But if you have lined up all your favorite candy in front of you and you're just sitting there and willing yourself not to eat it, we all know at some point, eventually, we're going to succumb and we're going to eat it. Temptation's going to be too strong. Self-control is going to be too weak because we're trying to rest in our own willpower instead of resting in God's fruit of the Spirit, Holy Spirit power. Okay? So we need to do our part. Think ahead what tempts us and what healthy boundaries can we set up in order to be able to exercise the self-control that God has already given us within us, within the Holy Spirit that lives in us as Christians. This can be also applied to relationships. If you have a relationship in your life that maybe is testing your patience, I know a lot of us have teenagers um, or elderly parents or uh, coworkers or friends or something. There's always relationships in our lives that test our patience. And having good boundaries within those relationships also help us establish the self-control of not blowing up and losing our temper, right? Because that ultimately disrupts our peace, their peace. Um, it disrupts joy, and you will start to see some, some fallings in all of the fruits of the Spirit. Kindness will fall away. Love will fall away at times. So if you will just set up boundaries, healthy, distinct boundaries in the areas where you feel temptation arising, in areas where you feel self-control is not as abundant as you would like. Set up those healthy boundaries. Pray about it. God will show you exactly where you need the boundaries, and he will show you what a good, healthy boundary could be for that. And take small baby steps. And of course, if you need help with that, if you want to talk through that, that is what I do in my coaching practice, is I help my clients talk through this process and come up with realistic, distinct, healthy boundaries that are fair but firm. And that means fair for everybody, including yourself. And us as people pleasers, sometimes, we tend to... Um, 
really get a little unclear about our boundary or completely not have a boundary at all. And all that's going to do is set us up to be discontented, frustrated, and that leads to all sorts of things, right? So, I want you to, guys to put in the comments if um, you would like to discuss maybe a, a way, a boundary that you need or a temptation that you have and maybe you're unclear on what boundaries to set. And as always, I am here to help you uh, walk through that process. And it all begins with prayer. I always start with prayer over you and uh, me and in the process before I start coaching. But you can pray about this on your own. Get a piece of paper, write your prayers out, Look up that verse, 1 Corinthians 10, 13. I will put it in the comments for you guys. And pray that God shows you what that means. A little trick that I tend to use if I'm having trouble distinguishing really what I'm trying to do and I'm getting a little confused or I've got a roadblock I can't quite get over. Um, I will take the verse and I will take each and every single word in that verse and I'll look up the literal definition of it and then synonyms for it. And that's an exercise I have used for years and years. Even if you think you know the definition of the word, looking it up and then also looking up synonyms for that word, it's amazing what that will allow God to bring to your mind and how it helps you pray and work through some issues, some things that maybe you're, you've you gotten stuck on. So. I encourage you to do that. Let me know if you watch the replay or if you're watching live. And if you would like to j just visit with me a little bit about something that you want to uh, have boundaries and grow your self-control around, I would be thrilled to help you do that. Uh, I love you guys. I appreciate you watching and taking time out of your day to share your lunch with me. Uh, please like and share with anyone that you think might benefit from this video. I'll talk to you later. Bye.